Me Join me right you. now, back on the show, UFC welterweight hot shot, Max Griffin. What's going on, Max? What's good, man? How are you? Good, good, man. First thing is, you know, well, of course we're going to talk about the fight business, but I want to talk about, uh, recently I saw you that you visited John Callison Elementary School to speak with some kids out there. Talk about yeah. that experience. Man, I... uh I want to say I started speaking to schools uh, last year. I have some connections. Uh, my my son is young. My son's seven, and actually started by going to his school. You know, uh, getting involved over there. And then I know a lot of people in Sacramento that you know are teachers and whatnot. So I've done five, six, seven schools. And uh, his old principal hit me up and was like, "Hey." I guess she switched schools or whatnot. She's at another school. She's like, hey, I'd love it if you could, you know, come to this school. So, um, amazing. I love talking to the kids. Um, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's fulfilling. You know what I mean? I mean, I've, uh, you know, being a youngster, I remember when people came to my school and, the kids really listen. The kids really relate, I feel like. And it's cool. I remember um, I did a I did a thing last year, and uh, I was supposed to only go to two classrooms. It was like a career kind of day. They had nurses, firefighters. And when once they heard the UFC guy was there at the school <laughs> talking, I went to like nine, ten classes, you know? So I guess it's okay if, oh, the, you know, oh, we want to, you, you know, you to talk to our school, or we don't want you to talk to our class. So can you talk to our class too? Our classes were getting jealous, and I spent all day there. So what I found, you know, and it's a, uh, it's back of little Fairfield, you know. So it's more of a mixed group, Asians, black guy, you know. It's a mix. It's not just all white, you know. And uh, they can relate, you know. They can relate, you know. I didn't have the the easiest childhood, but just growing up, staying dedicated, having a dream, and actually following it. And being honest about it and true about it, people can relate. The teachers can relate, and uh, I love it. Just to just to see the kids, they're pumped. Like adults don't give a shit, you know. They don't. I mean, they do, but not like kids. Kids look at you like you're a like a real life superhero. I'm always signing backpacks, phones, arms, uh, shoes, just all this stuff. You know, and uh, the kids are like genuinely happy and excited. They're motivated. You know, I'm not just tell tell you know about following your dream, but you got to read, you got to do your homework. You know, you can't be stupid. You have to get your stuff done, and uh, it really resonates with them. And I'm gonna start doing that more when I have more time. But you know, after fighting and that, I found that I love this shit. I love talking to the kids and. Um, they, you know, they're our future, so if I could help, and you know, that's part of the game. I love it. Yeah, I think that you're doing a great job, man, because right now, kids lack, you know, inspiration. Kids lack <laughs> good role models out there, I'm telling you, man, because they're all they're looking at is Instagram and Facebook and, and Twitter, terrible. and they're looking for we their role models on that. there. We didn't have that, you know? We we had like MTV and different sports we could watch on TV. These kids are just they're just copying all these rappers and these singers and what they're doing these days is ridiculous. These guys aren't role models, you know. They're they're clowns and and it's what they see and it's who they try to emulate. So for me, I'm old school, you know, and uh, they need us. <laughs> Put it like that. They need us. Because the stuff that they're absorbing and watching and stuff is bullshit, man. You know. Talking about being a kid, man, you grew up in Sacramento. You didn't take the most conventional way to the UFC. What was the turning point as a young kid, you know, that veered you into the right direction? Getting in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting in trouble, man. Uh, I was... I was pretty good when I was a youngster, you know, then I got to high school, you know, running with the wrong crowd, I mean, it is what it is, um, I was part of the wrong crowd, just doing the wrong stuff, 
you know, getting in trouble, going to parties. I mean, nothing like that's a bad thing, but just what I was doing, who I was with, it it wasn't the best. But it made me who I am now, you know. I had a lot of close calls, um, g- close calls with jail, close calls with getting killed and shit. Like, you know, I'm blessed, man, to have, have made it out of that alive and clean and clear. And uh, I, God saved me a bunch of times. So for me to get out of that... Um, I feel like I had a plan and something to do. You know, it's been a lot of wasted talent and a lot of wasted everything, man. So that's what got me. You know, I got saved, man. Like, whoa, like I shouldn't have made it out of that. Or I could, you know, five minutes after I left, you know, the whole place got shot up. Shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, just just, just close calls that weren't luck, you know, just blessings and, um, you know. That's the real shit. <laughs> yeah. So I got out of that, and now it's like, um, it put it in perspective. And like I said, I got saved for a reason. So I feel like now it's my time to do what I got to do. And I mean, fighting small to me. It's more than that. It's, it's you know, it's being a figurehead in the community, being a role model. Because uh, I could always do that. And and that's the feeling, just like the school stuff. It's, it's uh I love how I feel those days when I go do that. Um, I'm nervous, you know, going out there. The kids are out there, and it's uh, it's important. That's more who I am than just fighting. I fight on the side. I mean, it's my job, but um, I'm not just a fighter. You know what I mean? I think that people should start putting, you know, they shouldn't really say fighter anymore. You're an athlete, man, because the way you guys prepare for fights – you're doing so much in training camp to where it's like you're doing more than a football player. You're doing more than a – definitely yeah. doing more than a baseball player if you see their <laughs> training Basketball camps. Basketball players. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Uh, it's different. The touch on that, like you're saying about being pro athlete. Uh, I was getting into it on on a Facebook the other day about um, – we have these fights out here called Gladiator Challenge. It's a uh, – I used to fight for Gladiator when I was young. That was shit. Seven years ago, maybe eight. I had my first few pro fights in Gladiator Challenge. You know, they had a lot of guys come out of that. Uriah fought Matt, uh, Rampage Jackson. They had some names in there. But now, man, this is such a shit show. It's uh, you got guys fighting in jean shorts. You got guys fighting without a mouthpiece. Uh, no medicals. Um, no commission. It's not an like Indian casino, you know, so they can do whatever they want. But you got these guys, eight no fighting these guys that are one in ten. This scrubs like guys that don't fight. This is getting smashed on. I think it's bad for the sport. And you know, we were going back and forth online. Oh, Max, don't forget where you came from. Hey, I don't support those shows. They're, it's not. I mean. Uh, maybe those are fighters. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't, if you're just coming off the couch and you just had a beer and, you know, they let you fight, you know, we got, they got guys fighting twice in the same night, believe it or not. Twice in the same night. Um, it's kind of like that Explode Fight series down south um, that there was a lot of uh, controversy about. But yeah, those are fighters. I do feel like I'm an athlete. I'm a, uh, it's just another level, man. Like, 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 I felt disrespected by, oh, they're fighters. They're not fighters. You know, there, there, there's a, some of them are, and some of them got to go through that. But to say that's who they are and that's that, I mean, um, it's fucked up, man. For me, like, to watch these guys, they get, like, killed in there. I seen James Irvin a few years ago fight some fat schlub in the, with no experience. You know what I mean? That's dangerous. It looks bad for the sport. You know, so I'm proud to be in the UFC. I'm proud to have fought for West Coast, Hachi Palace fights, um, these these legit organizations. You know what I mean? Um, and now the UFC. So we are professional athletes. And it's a whole other thing now. It's, we're, uh, it's science now. You know, it's, 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 it's a business. And we're professional athletes. I just wanted to say that. I wasn't planning on talking about that. But uh, yeah, I'm I think it's be- important, man, to to 
to say that to to tell people that hey man you can't just group everybody into one category there's like different levels to this shit you know like there's like, like that saying it. right yeah there's levels to it and uh i work my balls off to get this level <laughs> i gotta work my balls off to stay here man well you mentioned close calls in the street now let's go to close calls in the cage ufc for the zella tiago alves it was a controversial split decision. Right. You know, we got to talk about that. A lot of people say you were a victim of home cooking. But you were very cool, calm, and collected afterwards in the post-fight interviews. Are you ever going to go back to Brazil to compete? No. No, we're not fighting Brazil again. I might go on a vacation. But uh, not to fight. You know, um, after the fight, I mean, I won decisively. We won. I wasn't. It wasn't even a question in my mind. Like the judges, you know what I mean. Like I knew I beat them. It was a good win. Even when they said whatever twenty nine, twenty eight, Alves. Like I still didn't even care. I still knew I won. You know what I mean. Like during that process of twenty nine, twenty eight, Griffin. You know, like like I didn't even think they were gonna give it to him. There's not one percent of me that was like, oh, he might get it. No, it was none of that. It was. Let's do it. Come on, baby. You know, and then I was like, nigga, what? <laughs> oh, my God. He he backstage said he didn't do enough. Um, his coach, Mike Brown, everyone backstage, all the staff of the UFC. Oh, my God, I feel so bad. Everyone was fucking, I'm so sorry. I talked to everyone, all the executives, Mick Maynard, Sean Shelby. Everyone's like, yeah, you won that. You know, everyone. Everyone. So it's like, you know, I just really, it, it's unfortunate. But I told them, I'm not fighting Brazil again. They're like, I don't blame you. <laughs> you know, they all said that, you know. And uh, I know I won. He knows I won. Everyone knows I won. But for me, you know, it's L on my record. Uh, I didn't get my win bonus. So that's that pissed me off. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't leave it to the judges, though, you know. So now... Everyone has to be finished, and, and it's his business. It, it's, I mean, if you, if you can't, if you can't win, and then you don't win, you know what I mean. So like now, for me, it's like you can win, but then you don't get to win. Uh, I'm not okay with that. So I, I can't leave it to the judges. You know, I, I can't. I just got to finish these guys, no matter who it is. And uh, so there's, there, there's no chance of that ever happening again. It's hard to finish guys. But that's all I've been fucking focusing on is finish, 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 finishing me every position, being fucking an asshole in there. And uh, I'm coming to finish, you know. I, uh, I'm fucking in that, in that, and that's why I want to get back in there. That's why I told both of those guys, hey, I want to get back in there. I want to get back. Told my manager, get me back in there. I want to get back in there. That night, I told him, ball, get me back in there. I'm ready. I came out unscathed. Not a mark on my face, not a mark on my legs. My legs were clean. Then it's some leg kick, but you know what I mean? Not one bruise. I have a bigger hematoma on my leg from my brother kicking me last night one time than I had taken however many kicks I took. You know what I mean? Um, but I came out unscathed. My only injury was my shoulder was sore from hitting him so many times. And that's it, you know? So... And if you saw saw the fight, and you saw the after the pictures and the videos, and uh, it's 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 a shame, man. It's kind of corrupt. It's it's corrupt, though. I would say it's real political. Um, you know, I looked up videos and all the highlights for him, like throwing on me, like nothing about him getting, you know, outstruck. You know, the I had the highest strike differential, significant strikes. Uh, hit him a hundred and so odd times, significant strikes. None of the take, none of the four takedowns. The three and a half, three minutes, seventeen seconds of control I had on top of him in the third round. It's like, it's like none of that was there. If you look back now, it's like, oh, it didn't even happen. So it pissed me off. It pisses me off right now. Um, so I gotta go out there and fucking kill whoever's in front of me. And uh, the lucky guy is Zelene. So I'm looking yeah. for it. Well at what point does the UFC need to step in? I think that this is becoming a problem now because it's guys' careers are on the line, you know? Like, what if that was, like, your third loss in a Probably row or something like that, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's a shame, you know what I mean? So, for me, it's like, 
I don't know what they can do. I know they flew in a judge, and that's the judge that called me, called for me. The other two judges were Brazilian. So the guy from England, you know, scored the fight correct. Um, I don't know. Maybe they should uh, always find the judges. You know what I mean? Maybe they shouldn't have judges from the hometown. You know, I think that that might be something they could do, you know, uh, non-partial judges. Because it happens, you know, it happens a lot. And, uh, you know, it's the last fight. They wanted to give him the win, supposedly. But it's a shame. I mean, you can't even score those rounds. You can look at the numbers per round. Yeah, he, uh, you know, I let him get back in the fight in the second round. The crowd was behind him. But if you, if you really watch what happened and if you count the strikes, he landed one more strike than me. Um, it was like 49 to 48 or something like that of, of, of laying the strikes. And none of them didn't do any damage. If I don't have a mark on my face or anything and his shit looks like he was rubbing on a fence or something, you know what I mean? It's a, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and then the third round, I got four takedowns and all that shit outstruck him. So it's like, what? there's not, there's not any way you could shape it or cut it or chop it up that he won, period. There's not. Stats, damage, time, control. I mean, there, there, there's not. People are like, well, I don't see how he won. He didn't win. <laughs> he didn't. It, it's I, They did me dirty, period, you know? And that's the truth of it. Well, you got that fire right now because, you know, two months <laughs> oh, later, you're bad. gonna go back into the cage with that fire, and it seems like you're yeah. ready right now to get in there and uh, take yeah, on your next I opponent. Go right now. The, the UFC seems like they wanted to get you back in, you know, they wanted to kind of reward you for getting, you know, screwed in Brazil, yeah. right? No, and I've, I've always fought like five, five months apart, it feels like five months, you're waiting, you're like. Shit, when am I going to fight? I have to feel it in my bones. i got a fight coming soon. Then you got to wait and hit him up. And it's usually, I usually fight twice a year, man. Um, maybe. You know what I mean? There's so many guys, so many guys on the roster. But uh, this is like a month and a half. You know, I fought February 2nd, February, March, April. Month and a half. I don't know. I loved it, though, man. I'm still in shape. I was in shape the whole time unscathed i've been training the whole time didn't take any time off so instead of this yo-yo thing we fighters do you know you you fight and then you chill you train your weight fluctuates then you're like spending half the camp getting back in shape and you know you're three months out and you get back in shape again and doing it again but this like i didn't lose a beat so it's like i'm just building and building my confidence I beat Tiago Alves, you know what I mean? Fucking, to me, that's confidence builder. You know, one of the best ever. Um, took his best shot, tore him up, um, out-wrestled him, out-grappled him. So, for me, it's a confidence thing. Like, let's fucking go, man. <laughs> let me get back in there, man. <laughs> for real. It's like, let me get back in there. Well, you're See, getting I mean. on a big card now because that UFC 236 got two title fights. You going to Atlanta? Is this the first time you're heading over there? Atlanta. I'm excited. <laughs> it's a striker's card. It's a striker's card. Yeah. All strikers. So it's a blessing to be on there. Um, big city. It's local. When they said Atlanta, I asked to be on Atlanta. Um, and they put me on there. So, man, to, to be on it. And, you know, that's local to me. And it's the United States. That's local. I fought in Brazil twice, Mexico City. You know, I've traveled. So to, to, to get on a four-hour flight and fight in a safe city, you know what I mean, where you can mm. walk around and you don't got to worry about getting robbed and kidnapped and shit. Like, you know, I got my son coming for the first time. It's the uh, – I'm excited, man. It's going to be a beautiful thing, man. And you're yeah, taking I'm on – a new guy, Zelim Amadeev, undefeated Russian boxer. I think that this is great matchmaking by the promotion also. Do you agree? I do. I do. And the, uh, I know this guy, you know. I know this guy. I had a chance to spar with the guy, actually, wrestle him a little bit. He was at Extreme Couture um, in Vegas. I ran into him a few times. So, uh, you know, 
It's good, man. It's good. It's good. It's the guy I'm already kind of familiar with. How many guys have you fought that that I've sparred? You know what I mean? Um, so I know what he's doing. I know how he looks. Uh, I'm excited. He is an ass. I have no respect for him. None. Not a drip. You know, he's one of those guys that tries to hurt his training partners. Uh, I was at Extreme Couture. Everyone's like, don't spar with that guy over there. I'm like, fuck that guy. I don't care. And he's, a, you know, he's throwing spinning elbows, flying knees, sparring. And, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, when I got the name, I was like, I know this fucking guy, man. All right, shit, you know. Um, but I have no respect for the guy. And uh, I can't wait to put my hands on him. Well, are you still splitting your time between California and Las Vegas? Yeah, uh, I have I mean, I was out there a few weeks ago. This last end of the camp, I wanted to stay focused on what I got going out here. Um, doing a lot of pro boxing, going against some badass pro boxers. Because, uh, I mean, this guy's good. He's, he's good. He has a good left hook. He has, he has some good shots. Um, but out here, the, for me, there's not too much. There's not many guys that can hang with me, honestly, on just, just, just just sparring and shit guys that so I, I you know this guy's not really a super boxer but i've been reaching out to pro boxers and then sparring a lot of good guys that can give me run for my money because no one else can you know so if i go in their world put on the freaking groin protector put my boxing shoes on and i fight these badass you know golden gloves guys and guys that won this and that undefeated guys and it's been helping me out a lot um, Cause I need to run for my money, man. I need that. I want that. I, I want to get fucked up, you know, or at least try, you know, close or something. Uh, but it just makes me sharper, better, and uh, we went traveling a little bit, and um, just working this stuff, man. I'm, uh, I'm excited, brother. I never seen a fighter or an athlete in such a good space after. A loss, you know. You seem like you're in a better space than you were before this fight, which is, you know, unique. Yeah, even that night, man. Even that night that uh, I lost or whatever, uh, I was mad, so fucking pissed. I was in the back, but I mean, what can you do? You know, mm -hmm. I was in the back. Uh, it's funny. I kicked the I I uh, I kicked this garbage can on the way back. Right, kicked it recycle blue recycle can flew ahead of me right like fucking 50 feet like flew. I soccer kicked this shit flew and I kept walking right I kept walking and it was like in my path like I kicked it in a straight line so I had to walk by it and I picked it up and put the top back on it and my coaches were like man it would have been a lot cooler if you would have left it on the ground but I'm a good guy, you know? They're like, yeah. I couldn't just leave it. They're like, man, it would have been a lot cooler if you didn't pick that up. <laughs> I was like, fuck you guys. And I went in the back uh, to the dressing room where all the guys were. I picked up a, a white pool chair. Like, you know, at the apartment complexes. Picked that shit up. Slammed it on the ground. That shit exploded. <laughs> Millions of pieces, and everyone's like, "Fuck, man, yeah, you got robbed, man, you won, we all had shit with in the back." And that was it. Once I broke that chair, it was like, and then Tiago was so cool, man. Mm -hmm. It's like they didn't want me to even go in there and talk to him. They're like trying to hold me back and shit. Like, no, let me fucking go talk to him. I went back there. He's so humble, so gracious, um, such a warrior, man. He's such a good person, good people. And it's good to fight people like that. Legend of the sport. I see why he's a legend of the sport. Why he has so many fans. Um, it was an honor to fight him. And 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 he, you know, he's not the judge. You know, people are like you, you even cool with Tiago. Tiago's not the judge. He knows he didn't win. You know what I mean? And uh, we talked. He's a man. And he told me what he told me. And what he, what can he do? You know what I mean? Like he got paid. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like he didn't. He didn't do shit for the judges. You know, he's not the judge. So people are telling me, oh, oh, you, you're cool with Tiago? Like, yeah. Like, you would, something you wouldn't understand. Mm -hmm. For you, he didn't even be telling me, like, I should be sideways with Tiago because I got a bunk decision. 
he was so gracious in the back. Uh, he's good people, man. I always have respect for him. That was one of my favorite fights ever, man. Uh, just being in there with him, just, just I remember just being in there with Tiago, busting him up, looking at him. Like just Tiago was in here, you know? <laughs> it's just a, just a dream, man. And uh, you know, it is what it Keep is. Keep moving. Keep pushing. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I know what I did. I said, man, I know what I did. You know? Definitely. Well, the last time we talked, man, we talked about the welterweight division. Now it's on his head. You know, Kamaru Usman is the is the champ now. Last time we talked, hey. Tyron Woodley was the champ. Smashed Woodley. Did you see that coming? I saw it coming, but not like that. Not that bad. I thought, I mean, Usman is a soldier, man. Uh, he's so focused and he's on his game, man. You know, I know he's at the Institute a lot. He's one of their guys. And uh, him and Henry Hoos turn over there at Black Zillions and all that. Like, he's uh, he's good, man. And 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 what he did to what he did to that man, man. Well, I mean, Woodley wasn't in the fight. I mean, you can see it in his face. He looked like he didn't want to be there. Uh, the whole time, and 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 once you're like that, and you, he like gave up in his head or something. He was scared. He fought scared, man. You can see it in his face. He so timid and just he just got worked, man. So, yeah, I was uh, disappointed, yeah, Usman's man. man. Usman's I man. expected more out of that fight from <laughs> Woodley. I was disappointed, to be honest with you. Yeah, he was in his head, man. He didn't throw. He threw like four strikes or something like that. Like, you can't fight like that. He knows that. He knows that. Yeah. Hats off yeah. to Us- Usman. Definitely. Fucking, that was impressive. I'm usually not like beyond impressed with guys that do shit, but mm-hmm. that was beyond impressive. Another hot topic is of the welterweight division is uh, UFC London. Jorge Masvidal. He put on the three piece and a soda on Leon Edwards backstage. Did you see? Do you see this getting worse as people talk trash more to guys that are not going to take trash talking lightly? I feel it. I feel it. You know what I mean? And uh, I didn't see anything wrong with it. I just, you know, you shouldn't be talking shit, you know? I one of those guys I would do it. But I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? And I think the maybe is in London. They don't give a shit. You can fight in London. Mm-hmm. I think they have a rule where you could like fight in the streets or something in London, like mutual combat or something. But I don't know <laughs> if I'm right. But I think they have some kind of thing where you could fight, like just man to man fight, like like it's okay, like because mm-hmm. they don't have weapons and shit out there. Only thing you can buy is guns and you know. But uh. Yeah, he went out there and put the hands on him, you know? Um, I mean, anyway, he did the till, man. Shit. And then, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a sick night, man. I was, I was happy with that night. I was just shocked that he didn't get in trouble, you know? You do that in California, United States, you're getting suspended. The commission's going to fine you out there. It's like, right? Did nothing happen, right? Yeah, nothing. Right? I mean, I yeah, he just bounced right like after. A safety and a suspension. Nothing, nothing happened. I was like, "Shit, let me fight in London." <laughs> <laughs> Man. All right. One last thing before I let you go. You know, music and sports go hand in hand. You're from the West Coast. You know, when you're in training camp, who are some of the artists you listen to? You know, some another fighter that I uh, interviewed. Uh, Josh Emmett, right? He's he's also out there, you know, in, yeah, you know, he's Team Alpha Male. Week. And he was dropping names. Like, can you drop some names, man? Like, who you listening to? Man, who am I listening to right now? Oh, well, out here. I mean, a little bit of Mozzie. Mozzie's putting it down out here, man. Um, but I still listen to a lot of the old shit, man. I listen to Jack. The Jacket Man is my boy, man. I love his music, even in his his death, man. But um, that's about it. Mozzie, Jacka, 
Um, right now, it's actually, I'm not listening to a lot of ATL shit right now. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to walk out to, man. For the last few weeks, I'm trying to, I'm going to put something out that's going to get the ATL crowd pumped. And uh, on my back, man, get that crowd behind me. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm trying to find something, some old school TI shit or something that's just going to get that crowd pumping because ATL is known for, uh, they have so many rappers, mm-hmm. so many, so many new rappers, you know, feature Migos and that. But I'm talking like young, young Jeezy, TI, Luda, that old shit, Lil John, the Eastside Boys, um, I've been honestly listening to a shit ton of that, trying to figure out what I'm going to put on to get that crowd jumping, because that shit's going to be packed, and them ATL boys know how to how to get down. They know how to dress. Um, you know, they know how to show out. They're going to be suited and booted out there. Definitely. So uh, I got to put on something for something for them people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, the catalog is long, you know, for <laughs> ATL, so I don't think you have a problem picking a song from those artists that you just mentioned. All right, man, April 13th, Atlanta, Georgia, UFC 236. It's always good talking to you, Max, and uh, good luck on your fight, man. Thank you, man. It's time, baby.